Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit Outdoors. Let's get some limb hooks ready to go. I've got a little bit of fine sawdust I'm dropping in this lid. Uh, in the spirit of getting ready for fishing season, uh, I have some lead molds and uh, I'm fluxing this with Brody wanted to see how to make these. So this is the molds my buddy Caleb Sanderson gave me this mold. He knew I was fooled with some of this. So I'm gonna make some fish leads. Uh, and there's several different sizes in there. <clears throat> there's a uh, two, three, four, five, and six ounce. So I put a little sawdust from over our rasping knife handles. Of course, y'all know I got me a homemade spoon tape to a thing. You've seen me do this when I was making bullet molds. Same process. Uh, so with this, I am... You put that sawdust in there. And I bought this little skillet when I was at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. The lodge cast iron store is right across the road. So uh, I sent Brody off out yonder before while I'd done all this because I didn't want him up here while I was fiddling around and then I, I don't think it was quite as interesting as he thought it was going to be but I wanted to do it anyway. Uh, what my intentions is is you seen back uh, a couple of years ago I made a whole bunch of new uh, limb lines. Well I'm going to redo some new ones. I want a different style. I'm going to try something different. I want my lead at the bottom and my hook above it because I want to drop down and bounce my hook on the bottom to find that bottom and then pull it up just a little bit and tie it so that I know where I'm fishing at relative to the bottom. When your sinker is above your hook, you just kind of all willy nilly getting tangled up. So anyway. I am fixing to pour the first one. I have done let this melt. My my dad-in-law brought me some bar lead. I will show you what that looks like in a little bit. It is uh, It was some rods. Some of them three-quarter inch, some of them half inch. I, they from a, a battery plant. He's working that up in uh, Indiana. So right here, I have already done this one time, but just for demonstration, I held this over this fire. Let this get up to uh, a temperature. You want you want your mold warm. You don't want it. You don't want to pour it into a cold block of steel or the aluminum. This is aluminum. I have to watch what I say. I be just talking, and and people watch this, and they if you say one word right off, they can't figure out what you're talking about. So you have to be perfect. Um. And I don't want to be misleading. I just. <clears throat> We're going to attempt. To do this. And that spoon. Anyway. <clears throat> oh. And I don't know how much I need with this. And see how that all. This may take a whole lot more lead than what I'm interested in fooling with. And I got a, I, I know y'all can't see. Let me turn y'all down. I got a board laying here while I'm doing this over because I didn't know what I was getting into. I got a couple of spoons, rusted up old spoons laying out here. That. Let's see if you keep it on something fairly clean, you can retrieve a lot of your scraps. Anyway, and of course I got these old. Oh, y'all! I didn't do good at all. Man, man, man. We're going to have to redo all of that. Yeah, buddy. But, I can tell you already, I don't need that biggest one down there. 
that you need to get that metal block pretty, pretty warm. I, I thought I had it warm. I didn't have it warm. The next thing is, is diddling with that spoon ain't going to work for this. You got to pick this, ladle up this whole pot and pour it into that. So one of them, you know, hold the handle down that fills up would be ideal for making these. I will say this, making fish leads, for me, has been harder than making bullet leads because you got a little bit of lead you pulling in for a bullet. I, it hadn't been hard to get that right. Uh, this You got to heat this big old thing up. And I, I found out real quick, I need the very smallest one. All this time sitting here fiddling with it, which ain't been about 15 minutes, but just aggravating. Uh, this two ounce weight is is more than I need for what I'm what I'm doing. Uh, I know so it, it depends on where you're fishing and all to what you need. But anyway, let's do it like this. It, it, it's not been easy. It's not impossible. Not impossible. Alright, I'm gonna dump that out. Go ahead and get that up here. Keeping it warm. Oh, I got me some pliers right here. So, what I'm doing, taking my pliers, and you can't feel nothing with these big old welding gloves on. I, I hate a big old pair of god awful gloves, but. It's the only way to keep from burning your hand off. But you can't do nothing with them on. I don't know how in the world a man works with a big old pair of gloves like you. He ain't doing much, I can tell you that. You can't feel them do doodle them. You wear a pair of them all day, you ain't nothing but a grunt. <laughs> They not for a craftsman. <laughs> I don't like them. Not near a bit. I can see where these gloves would cause a fella to get hurt. I mean, you can't even operate a simple pair of pliers. I'm sure there's somebody out there thinking, yeah, you burn your hand bad, you don't operate a win either. Oh, Lord. I can have my opinion. I get my method right here set down. Biggest thing right here is be careful. Watch when that fills up, starts running over into the other hole. All right. Then set that back up there. Like that, keep it warm. Get this, and I sent Brody in the house, y'all. I looked up a while ago. He was over there with his head leaning way over in that water bucket. I'm telling you, that boy thinks he's parked up. I told him I was gonna haul him over there to the bridge and put him out. Well, y'all, I'm about to get where I'm rocking and rolling with this. I'm going to turn the camera down and let you see that quick. I'm going to pour about two or three in a hurry because this has done got up to temperature, and it is. I'm figuring it out. Oh, and I screwed that nut just because y'all were watching. That's what happened. Good Lord. I don't know what I did. I probably let it cool down while I was turning the camera on. We're getting down to the lap of the lead too.
going to trim all these up here in a little bit, clean them all up good. Now there's a lot of excess lead on them things. Yeah. Let's see if we got it rolling this time. See if I can do it without meddling. I found out right here, the faster you pour them and dump them, the better off your stuff is, because you, your mold is heating up more. All right, that's probably about all we're going to be able to get right there, y'all. We got about 23 or so, something like that. So anyway, we're going to, uh, I'm going to lay that down, let it cool off. I'm going to... Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I need to uh, clean all of these up. All right, y'all. Let's get these cleaned up and the hooks made. I've got a drill bit. I am just reaming these holes out. That's the fastest way for me to do that. Oh. Uh, and I'll try not to do all this at one time. You see, I got... I think I got 23 leads made. And I've got my pink line here. I know... Those of you that have been following my fishing for a while, y'all know I like pink line. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm fixing to ruffle some feathers. I use this twisted line uh, and it's smaller diameter. I don't use the black tarred bank line. I do like the black tarred bank line, but I use it for a lot of other stuff. Uh, but I redo, you see right here, I have got two rolls of hooks. These are several, several years old. Uh, some of these hooks on here is six, seven, eight years old. Twisted line, it's not rotten. It's not trying to break. Uh, I picked up a roll out of my daddy's boat over there. He had made with the braided line, pulled on it, and it... <laughs> braided line, the, what draws people to it is for some ungodly reason, they refuse to give in to want to singe this and burn it in too with a lighter. I, and I don't know why. They think, well, I can take a pair of scissors and cut that braided line. It don't fray. Braided line, for some reason, is not as strong as this line. I don't care what you say. I have tried it. I have wanted to fish with it. It, it, it does not work. It, it, you can get one, you, you can make your hooks, you can use them this year, you'll be fine, okay? Let's understand that. They will work. If you're going to do like me and you're going to keep these and pull them out every year and reuse them, uh, I go through my hooks this time of year and organize everything. I keep a roll of big hooks. These are all, and I don't know what number, they're probably like anywhere from four to six alt. I don't have seven. They're probably just like four alt. These are probably like two alt, one alt hooks. These are really small hooks for the most part. Uh, some of them circle hooks. You can see, uh, but not very big. And I think most of this is half ounce egg sinkers. Uh, and these are two ounce. So I'm just experimenting. But if you're going to keep them year after year, you want to use twisted line. Use the tar bank line if you want to. I, I just like pink because that is... It's been my tradition. I, I use pink line, okay? In the stove. So I'm gonna go six foot. And that is, I don't know if that's probably enough. Let's see. Six, seven, eight, nine. We're doing nine foot. I don't know if I want that much. I think I'm gonna go six foot. You lose some when you make your, and when I say six foot, I go as far as I can reach right here. Let's make one like this and see how it comes out. We may adjust the length. So what I do is, and the wind's blowing like horrible, really what I need to do is light my candle up here and I can burn everything over it. May not burn. I tried to make that candle out of some cotton string. It may burn. 
But anyway, I can drag my line over it and not keep wasting the fuel in my lighter. All right. So what I want to do is I want to make a loop on either end. I don't know if I'm going to like that or not. It's going to wind up too short, I think. Because right now, y'all, the swamp is flooded, and a lot of those holes, the water is very deep. Uh, and when I say very deep, I'm talking like six, eight foot. It is not like 20 or 30 foot. Uh, so, what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting... I'm wanting my lead at one end. I'm wanting to come up about six or eight inches. And you don't need a huge loop. You need it big enough for your hook to go around. And I'm thinking about doing them like this. All right. I have some hooks here. Go ahead and uh, I'm going to use the smaller of the hooks. I'll put them on a piece of uh, tie wire. And some of these, you need a uh, pair of pliers to get it through there. Uh, so see, that is with no swivel, no nothing. All right, the next thing is I do have some swivels Oh, uh, here's my problem with swivels. These have these little snaps on them, which now down here where I'm going limb hooking, we're not going to catch no gigantic fish. Oh, uh, so probably what I'm going to, I just, mm, I really, really, really struggle with this clip right there. That thing right there is garbage. It has caused me a lot of problems over the years. So for the, for the sake of doing this, we're going to use the clip. We're only going to make a handful of them for, for some testing because this will simplify everything. This is, this, I, this is not my ideal favorite way of doing this. I'm just going to tell y'all. I am very, very leery. I will tell you this. You don't want to try to catch no ground with that hook. Now these little old catfish that I'm going to be fooling with, oh, um, but see, now that, that's going to be down, and there's going to be some current. That's going to pull my bait out to the side. It is not going to hang straight down, okay? We've got current. Uh, so, the only problem I have with this whole setup right here is rolling these up. It, you leave a lot of this right here flopping off the side of your board. And that is why all of these other ones on here are set up differently. I want to show you how they are. Okay, you see how this setup is? Hook, come up six inches, swivel, lead, and then I don't know why I have a knot tied right here. I'm sure I was in a shallower spot than what I needed to be in or something, something other to that effect. But, um, uh, you see how I wind up though with mix match stuff from uh, something will get cut and I'll patch it or rig it while I'm down there or, or if I'm out and I'm thinking, hey, I need another hook right over here, they, I'll change it. And you see that bar? Mm. That barb is broke off. We need to do. We need to redo this one anyway. Um, and this don't even look like one. I don't know. Don't really look like one of my hooks. But where I fished last year, nobody else fishes, so it wasn't like I picked up somebody else's something. Oh. Um, I tell you what, I did take them over to uh, Tom Bigby with me, and I imagine we were, that's what we did. We was using these on a uh, limb hook, I mean on jugs at Tom Bigby, me and Casey did. 
I probably picked up an abandoned jug that was laid up in the junk. All right. Probably, ow, probably gonna make them a little longer than six foot though. I don't, I'm not liking six foot. So I'm probably gonna go least, I don't know, six, seven. We're gonna at least go to our arm right there. See how I burn that into like that? Come up. So what I'm fixing to do now, I'm going to make a few of these and then a bucket. I have got a bait trout out. I don't know if there's anything in it. I need to go check on it and move it around. And uh, so we've got to come up with some bait. Oh, uh, yeah, I like this length better. And the, I'm going to tell you why I want a long, uh, while we're working on We're going to finish working on this. Oh, uh, so when I'm tying this off. One more time for demonstration. I know I've talked to y'all a lot of this. I'm going to bring the camera over here where you can see really good this time. Okay. Whenever you come tie your hooks, you've seen a lot of people pull and make them a loop like this, and then they go over the end of their limb. You know, they got them a pair of snips, and they're cutting all the limbs off. And that'll work, y'all. That, that'll work. Let me show you a better way. Now, most of y'all that's been watching me a while already know this. So the reason I want these long is because it don't really matter where I want to. Uh, I pull the, I'm going to drop that down to let I feel it hit the bottom. When I feel it hit the bottom, I'm going to pick it back up just a little bit. I'm going to wrap that around. You see how I crossed right there? Let's exaggerate it a little bit. We wrap. That, that is just simply a wrap. Cross it on your front side. Come up. Pull, grab. Let me do it with the hands out of the way. Grab your weight in, your hook in. Tuck whatever you want under it. I mean, you can tuck all of it under there, make you a big old long thing. But you see this, that ain't going nowhere. That that is secure. You you pull on that. That ain't that ain't going nowhere. See me moving, bending that axe handle. Ain't going nowhere. I get ready to come retrieve it. I grab my loop that's right up here. Pull that tight. Off it comes, y'all. If if you fighting a whole bunch of current and bushes and limbs and you scared of snakes and all that kind of business, cross it. Easy to tie. I come in here. Do it this side, because I forget y'all can't see. And you ain't got to tuck no whole bunch under there. See how I just got just got a little loop under there. That's secure. It's wrapped. Now, now you don't want this hanging down in the water right here to where if a, a brush comes washing by, it grabs it and pulls it, because then it'll leave. Now, you, you want to get it, you know, where it can't. So I usually pull all this on through till my loop is right there. And I pull tight. Now, all this hanging over here ain't going to matter. Something can hang in that and it really ain't going to hurt nothing. You just want your main loop, other end of your loop right here at the top. Got weight on it. See, I'm pulling tight. Grab that. Comes loose. Y'all, I have heard that knot call several different things. Uh, improved cinch knot. And I, I don't know what all. I, I personally don't know the name of the knot. I had an old man here showed me this knot. Showed me how to tie it. My, my wife's uncle. And he done gone on before us. But he left me with a valuable, valuable piece of knowledge right there. And what I'm doing is trying to share it with some of y'all to help you out. Uh, he wouldn't have wanted me sharing it with y'all while he is still alive. That's a secret now. You don't be sharing your fishing secrets. <laughs> See? <laughs> now... Now that he ain't with us no more, I, 
I, I'm gonna share them secrets, but now he uh he knew how to catch fish, y'all, man. If there's a fish in a mud hole, he he catch it. So I'm gonna put my swivel on there. And we're gonna try these swivels. And I'm gonna tell y'all, when you see me fishing here in the next few weeks, the first time we come up there and that swivel right there and my hook is broke loose, I'm probably gonna have to repent right there in the boot. <laughs> I promise I won't say no choice words. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna think some ugly thoughts. <laughs> you know. I ain't that perfect. Anyway, I got two of them made. Y'all see how that is a it is a dangling right there. That is what I want in the water. Uh, not not all this. This 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 will be up in a tree. But that'll be wind. See my bait'll be on there dangling like that out behind it. Old catfish, he gonna be right off the bottom and smell that. And this is the purpose. I'm gonna brump this down to where it is, touching the bottom. And it don't matter then if that water level goes up and down. I ain't gonna come down there and my bait hanging way up out of the water. Ain't gonna happen. If it's out of the water, the bank's out of the water. See what I'm saying? So that that is the purpose for me doing what I'm doing right here. So we're going to roll them up on our board. <laughs> All right, so let me tell you what I'm doing. I went down there, checked my traps. Ain't nothing in my traps. Took my crawfish rate, 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 rate. Ain't nothing. No bait, nowhere. So I did move my traps all around. I got only got two uh, minnow traps, basically what I'm using. And you drop them down to... Uh, try to catch crawfish or whatever so i put some bottles in one to float it up and i'm gonna check it in the morning and see if maybe there's some minnows or something in there but not to worry we still gonna put lines out so what i got right here and i'm gonna lay it out so it was thought hey, there's some I'm sure what this is that may be I thought it was brain but i think i thought it was heart I have got no telling what all in here, but what I'm after anyway, I get sidetracked, is uh, I got some deer liver right here. Oh, uh, so we're gonna thaw it out and let it be ready to go. That way it ain't froze solid in the morning. And we're gonna start fishing with some liver. Uh, neighbor down the road has caught some catfish with bacon. So we're gonna try some odd hand stuff right off the bat till we can get our hands on some live bait. It's just a matter of me moving some traps around till I find where they some bait at. We a little bit early in the year. Hang with me though, we're gonna get some uh we're gonna get some fish caught here shortly. The next thing is is I'm trying to remedy right now. I gotta put them lines on some of I can't handle that lead flopping off on the end with the hooks like I've been rolling them. So we're gonna try to find us a bucket to put them in with the hooks around some way with the hooks hooked up at the top, to keep them from getting all tangled up everywhere. That's my biggest problem. I don't like stuff all tangled together and having to fight with that when I'm in that canoe. So let me figure that out. And when I do, I'll show you that. And then, uh, then the next video, we're gonna be going fishing. All right, so y'all know that the answer to everything is either an ice cream bucket or a coffee can when it comes to containers. Oh, if, if you're not using one of the two, you are just missing out. So what I'm gonna do, take this lead, we're gonna wrap this hook all around this lead, and I mean, we're gonna wrap it good. Okay, boom. All right, now you got this much. Wrap what you can of it. We're gonna hook, the, hook that. Now that is gonna jumble all around in there. We we know this. We 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 experimenting. Y'all know about experimenting. All right, they know about experimenting. All right, this ain't a foolproof way yet. I I promise y'all, I'm gonna come up with something better. This is gonna get me till tomorrow, okay? Cause I can't put this in the canoe, and then it jumble all up and be a mess. I I can't handle it, y'all. Um, now if I had a piece of tape or something on there, that would be better. 
Oh, uh, but I don't, I don't have, and I didn't make but 12 of these. Obviously, I'm taking my two rolls, most likely the smaller roll, because y'all, there, you can catch fairly good, catch, what down there on them small hooks? I can catch the biggest fish down there on a small hook, I can. Oh, uh, it don't. I like to have bigger hooks because there's some places I go down there that has holds some bigger fish, and they could possibly be some bigger ones there. I didn't catch no giants last year, but I like that. That is a, a pretty good size hook for where I'm fishing, and I don't know. I'm trying to get something relative so you can see the size of that. But I'm just I'm just hooking them and, and laying them in there. And probably what I'm gonna do is cram a rag or something down in there on top of them. Uh, I run out of little small hooks. But when I pull that up, I can I can unstring. It'll just unroll. I think we're gonna find out. I may be badly mistaken tomorrow. But we're gonna probably try to go and put these out like morning time no not early early I, I have to get through with my coffee and and all such as that i don't i don't be getting out rambling around too far for seven o'clock you never know though it depends on how excited i get excited about fish i come near getting up for daylight to fish and i do hunt but let me get these all rolled up get them in there and uh Next video, you see, we're going to hopefully, we're going to be in the canoe and we're going to be paddling around and the water is somewhat going down. Now, I will tell y'all this, just, just for, to cover my hide, there is a slight chance of rain tonight. Oh, the, the swamp has just got back down in, in good condition and, uh, so it, you know, it could spoil our plans if it gets out of hand. I don't really think you're supposed to do all of that, though. But you don't never know. Them them weather folks, man, they don't know if they coming or going. I done look, oh, oh Jim Cantor, man, he, he done got him some of them blippy looking sunglasses and he can't even see the weather map no more, I don't think. And then old girl with the clown suit on every week, she's, oh, Stephanie Abrams, she don't, she never did know if she is coming or going. I can't. We got to where we watch AccuWeather. Stephanie Abrams, she, she can't talk without mentioning climate change, which I believe in climate change. Just ain't ain't why they they think we're having it. You know, they don't they don't realize what causes. You know, climate been changing since creation. That's a fact, Jack. So, we are aware of these climate change, woman. My vehicle didn't cause it. I'm going to just tell you that. Because I paddle a canoe. <laughs> Come on. All right, let me get this like I want it. I'm going to cram a rag down in there, or uh, or I'm going to cram something down in there. So I told y'all I'd figure something out. Look at that, a piece of pipe set down in there. I started cutting them out here, but that didn't work good. I cut them now. I'm going to just show you. Cut them notches with this cutoff wheel on this grinder. I cut out my nine wheel. Look, they're down in that piece of pipe. Ain't going nowhere. Lid go right down on there. Set that right off in the boat. No tangled up mess. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Winner, winner, catfish dinner. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. And we'll see y'all in the canoe. Coming up shortly.